Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are in Sea of Thieves Cruise Sales. Uh, this is a guide on how to do a lot of the things added in this update. So, in this video I will tell you how to beat the curse ships. It's like all three of the current curse ships. Plus some basic ship, how to kill the ships basically, which should work for the next two weeks. How to figure out when the ships will spawn and where. And the alliances, because when I was playing, no one knew how to do it. And also where to investigate in Wanda's workshop. Here, if you're just looking for one specifically, this is the time in the video is at. Basic skeleton ship info. So, you sink it like a normal ship. I recommend using gunpowder barrels, they sink it much faster. You're gonna have to fight tons of ships in waves. So just be warned. Roughly 10 ships. So don't use all your gunpowder barrels on one. You can also board the ships. This is very good. Because you can board them, they also have supplies. The banana barrel is located here. Cannonball barrel located here. And planks located down here. So, that's how you get materials if you're running low. Just get somebody to run in there, kill some skeletons, grab all the materials. The skeletons will respawn, so it's not worth going over there and killing them all once and then getting out of there. If you're going to kill them, kill the ones that patch, because they can patch, and kill the ones that are manning the cannons. They have blunderbusses, and they don't have flintlock pistols. They, uh, there will also be one or two on each ship, not always unless they got killed, but I've seen some ships without them. Snipers. So if you see a glint coming from like the middle of the crow's nest or the little thing on the front, like the little building on the front, those are snipers, so just be careful. Okay, as for tips, I, I already mentioned this one, but bring gunpowder barrels. We didn't have any, but some of, our, uh, pe some of the people in our alliance did. Bring gunpowder barrels. They will be helpful, really helpful. Also, if you're going to board, I don't recommend using the cannon. I never got on the boat once from using the cannon, but I didn't use them that much. Sword surfing is much better when it's at, when it's closer. If you've got a barrel, maybe try to crash into it or something. I also don't like moving because if you if you anchor the boat, the boat stopped. You don't have to deal like you, not the skeleton ship. If you anchor your own boat, you don't have to worry about steering it. You probably won't. You'll probably get hit more. But you don't have to worry about steer steering it, and it's better for your alliance because if all the ships are like in that one area, you can all help sink them. If one person's just leading the ship around, you can't really help. Well, and and then you have to risk someone has to steer, and you have to risk crashing into another player. And yeah, I recommend staying still. That was our strategy for when we did it. Damage can happen extremely fast on a galleon. We were on a galleon the whole time. We took damage so fast. Like, whenever a cannonball hits you, make sure to go check the lower deck to make sure that you're not flooding. Also, if you're on a galleon and you're low on planks, do not patch the middle deck. The water will only come in through the middle deck if the water level is in the middle deck. So if you can keep it on the bottom deck, don't worry about the middle deck holds on a galleon. Also, get into an alliance. That's always good for killing people. More people, easier to kill it. Also, the battle won't reset if you leave, because it is in waves. So if you leave, if you die and come back, it won't reset. I don't know about the specific wave you were fighting if that resets, but the whole fight in general does not reset. So if you were on the captain or on the final boss, you can come back and you'll be on the final boss still. And this isn't a one time per time it's on. You can do it whenever you want. Well, it's on. Okay, I'm going to tell you each of the ship's individual abilities that are currently out. So, the easiest one, in our opinion, is Cursed Helm. Its ability, it's Cursed Cannonball. So they all have their own Cursed Cannonballs. Cursed Helm's Cursed Cannonball locks your steering wheel. Well, you can still turn it, but I don't think you're, you can turn at all. So, it's probably best to put down your anchor when fighting Cursed Helm. Second, right in the middle, right now, is Foul Grog. Foul Grog's Cursed Cannonballs make you drunk. 
I don't think it's worth jump, jumping in the water to get rid of it, because it seems to wear off on all crewmates at the same time. It'll make you barf repeatedly and drunk for a few seconds. Like, 15 or so. Next is by far the hardest. The Dancing Demon. This one sucks. Okay? This one took us by far like, way longer than all the other ones. Um, so its cursed cannonballs force you to dance for 10 seconds. Just whatever you're doing, stop it. You're dancing. Too bad. If you were about to patch the last hole, and you're, if there's a ton of holes and you were about to bucket, and the ship is flooding really fast and you're the only person on the ship, too bad you're dancing. For 10 seconds. We have sunk in like five times because of those cursed cannonballs. So that's the hardest one. Okay, so now, on the outposts, in each, so there are three areas, I'm assuming you know this. Shores of Plenty, which is on the left side, Wild, which is on, the Wild, which is on the right side, and Ancient Isles, which is on the bottom. In the bottom left corner of the map, left of Sharkbait Cove, is where Cur er, Foul Grog is located. Cursed Helm is northwest of Smuggler's Bay, in the top left corner of the map. Dancing Demon is to the east of Marauder's Arch in the top right corner of the map. That is where they all are currently. Next week, I'm assuming they'll move. So to figure out where they are, in one of the outposts, or maybe both of them, uh, in each zone, you'll find this pedestal with the note attached. You look at the note, it'll tell you where the crew is. It'll also tell you what time. So for instance, 11th to the 20th. If it says that... That means that the boss will only be up from the 11th to the 20th. There is currently always a boss up. The Cursed Helm is up from the 1st to the 11th. Okay, so, if, it'll say a time. You check your clock, and it'll have a little date on, like, the lower middle of the clock. That's the date. From the 1st to the 11th, from the 1st to the 10th, the Cursed Helm will be av available to fight in the top left corner of the map. From the 11th to the 20th, the Foul Grog will be able, you'll be able to fight the crew of the Foul Grog. The Dancing Demon will be from the 21st to the 30th. It is east of Marauder's Arch in the top right corner of the map. Sharkbait Cove is in the bottom left and Smuggler's Bay is in the top left. Okay, that's all for finding them. And if it changes on the 7th, when it changes on the 7th, you might need to go check on their location again. It might be changed and the times might be changed. So just check an outpost. If you want to see them yourself, they are currently at, I know for, for certain, they're at Ancient Spires, Golden Sands, and Ga Galleon's Grave. I haven't seen them, I haven't been to any other outposts since then. So I don't know about the other ones. Okay, alliances. If you go up to your crow's nest, there'll be a small box. You click on that box, the offer alliance flag will now be in the second category. If you uh, use it, you'll have this little heart flag. If another crew wants to join, they can join your uh, your alliance. If the flag, if your flag is the same as their flag, you're in an alliance. That's how you tell. Now, to enter an alliance yourself. If, some, if you see somebody else with that heart flag, then you can go into it, into the second category, and you'll see the heart, the offer alliance, join alliance, and, and leave alliance. That's pretty simple. If there's another group with another chip with the flag near you, you just hit join alliance, and you'll join an alliance with them. You can hit leave alliance to leave the alliance. It's pretty simple. Last one, Wanda's workshop. When you walk into Wanda's workshop, Wanda won't be there. It'll be her sister, Wanda, with an O. If you walk into the shop, in front of you there should be a torn piece of parchment. That is one of the three clues you need. Click on that, read the dialogue if you want, and then hit close. To your left, there should be a box with a necklace on it. You click on that, you can read the thing, and hit close. Now the last one. This is the hardest one it took us the longest to find. So if you walk straight out the door for a little bit, 
you'll find footprints. You should be able to see them from the door. You follow them down to the shore, then you can examine them. You can read the dialogue if you want, then hit close. Also, I will be doing gameplay. I have gameplay footage of this event, and I will be posting that soon. I don't know how soon, because it takes a long time to edit eight hours of footage. But if you guys want to see that, uh, I will post that soon. Probably in two parts. So guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. If it was helpful, then uh, leave a like if you liked it. I mean, you don't have to, but if you want to. Uh, if there's anything else, like, if- I don't know if this is available yet, but Wanda's Alchemy Lab and the other Wanda-related accommodation, I don't know if that's out yet. I have no idea. I'm assuming it'll come out in the next weeks, but if I'm wrong, you can tell me in the comments. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.